Okay, so now we're going to look at this statistic called covariance. And with covariance, it looks at, what a covariance does is it looks at the relationship, it's a description of the var variability of two variables and how they relate to each other. It measures direction only, not the strength, but just the direction. It ends up being a positive or negative of linear relationships. So consider the scatter plot below with this point, 17.2 and 91.6 is x bar, y bar. This is x bar, y bar. And if I come along here and I'm going to make a line this way, this is y bar, and also a line this way, which is x bar. So this is y bar, and this is x bar. Each of these points, for example, this distance here is specifically going to be x minus, or that distance is x minus x bar. That's what this distance is. And the distance here is simply y minus y bar. And these are called residuals. This is called a residual. And what the covariance does is it takes these residuals and it multiplies them together. So it takes the residuals x minus x bar. And I look at all of them. Look at all the y minus y bars, and I'm going to look at them. And so, and then I'm going to, I multiply them, and then I'm going to add them up, and then divide by the number of points that we have. And this is covariance. But what covariance also does, if I think about it, if I go all the way out to this point, this is x minus x bar, and this is y minus y bar. This particular multiplication of these two will contribute significantly more than this one. So ones that are close to the mid, the mean, oh, sorry, the average point have a larger impact on the covariance. In essence, it spreads out or it forces, it makes it look like a more of a line kind of thing. So it is more impactful. In this case, they would both be positive and so it's going to be a positive covariance. But if I take my formula and I replace x bars and y bars as opposed to summation, I know when I'm summing all these, uh, summing them all up, all these averages up and then divided by n, that's really just talking about expected value. So another way to think about covariance and the one we use most often is the expected value of x minus mu sub x, the population average, times y minus mu sub y. And so we look at the expected value of this calculation, and that is covariance. Please note it is not in the formula booklet. This is something you just have to see. And so looking at the formula here, if I expand out my expected value, I get xy minus x mu y minus y mu x plus mu x mu y. And using my expect expectation algebra, I know that this is expectation of x, y minus the expected value of x times, this is a constant. So I can rewrite this as the constant mu y e x minus the constant mu x times expected value of y plus mu x mu y. This is adding on just a linear uh, translation. Well, the expected value of x, if I keep x, x y, the expected value of x is simply mu sub x. Mu y, expected value of y is mu sub y plus mu sub x, mu sub y. Well, those cancel, and I get the expected value of x, y minus mu sub x, mu sub y. So here is another version of the covariance formula that we can use as well.